Hey, this is Elijah with the Oxygen team, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to use Oxygen shape dividers uh, and modify them a bit to add this kind of cool scaling effect as you scroll between sections. This is actually surprisingly simple to do, but does involve a little bit of JavaScript. So let's jump into the builder and we'll get started. So here we are in Oxygen, and the first thing we need is a couple of sections. So let's add just a blank section, and we'll add our shape dividers to it. So we're going to go ahead and go to the bottom of the Properties pane with the section selected and click Add Shape Divider. Now for this effect, I think I want kind of an angular effect. So let's do uh, Angle 1, and let's add some top padding to this section to move it way down. Okay, and then let's go into the structure pane and select our shape divider. And let's go ahead and just give it a color. We'll do this blue color. And then we wanna have a bit of a layered effect. So let's add another shape divider by duplicating this. And then let's just flip this horizontally and then reduce the opacity a bit. This will work best for our initial setup. Now you could theoretically have shape dividers of different heights kind of layered on top of each other as well. But for this uh, simpler implementation, all the shape dividers are kind of going to be the same height if they're within the same section. So we're not making that distinction between the shape dividers. So instead we're flipping them uh, to give us some layering. So now that we have that, we also just need a section below the shape divider to give us something to scroll into. Uh, to illustrate the effect. So let's add a background color that matches our shape divider. And then let's add a bunch of top padding here. We can go to advanced size and spacing and just set like, I don't know, 800 pixels of top padding. Normally this would be your content, kind of pushing these sections down to the height that they are. But just to illustrate this shape divider effect, we're just gonna use padding. And then we can add one to the bottom of this section too. First, let's duplicate the section, set it to a white background color, scroll on down to that duplicated section here, and then let's add a shape divider, but we're gonna put it on the top, and just to see some uh, different effect, we'll just leave it as this kind of uh, wavy, <laughs> slimy looking thing, and we'll go ahead and set it to blue, and then we can also duplicate this one and change to like another wavy uh, shape divider, like wavy two, and then reduce the opacity here as well to give us another layered effect there. So let's save that. That is enough to illustrate the effect. So let's go ahead and we're gonna add a code block, which is where we're gonna do our JavaScript magic. And let's go to PHP and HTML and just comment that out so that we don't get any output in the builder. And then let's go to JavaScript. I want to note we're going to use vanilla JavaScript here instead of jQuery. Even though jQuery is generally loaded by default on the front end, I like to avoid using it unless I absolutely have to. So we're going to use vanilla JavaScript to create an event that fires when the document's fully loaded. So we're going to do uh, var ready equals, and we're going to do an arrow function callback. And then within that, we're going to do an if document.ready state does not equal loading, which is a string. So if the ready state does not equal loading, we're gonna call the callback function. Otherwise, we want to add an event listener to the document. So we're gonna do document dot add event listener. Whoops. Listener dom content loaded is the event we're adding the listener for. And then we're gonna call the callback function when that event occurs. Now we can go down and call the ready variable, which is actually a function and define that callback. So that's gonna be another arrow function. And first, since we're working in oxygen, we're gonna do if window.angular, and we're just gonna return if that's true, which means uh, we're in the builder. So window.angular exists when you're in the builder, not on the front end. So this will prevent any weird JavaScript stuff from happening while we're in the builder and throwing errors. Then uh, we're gonna call a function here in a little while. And we're gonna call the function calc height. So I'm just putting a comment here so I can remember what we're gonna do there. This is our setup to call something once the document's fully loaded. Uh, but we also need to add an event listener for a scroll event. So we're gonna do document .add event listener scroll. And when the scroll event happens on the document, we wanna run this function. 
And within this, we're going to do another if window window.angular return. And then calc height is going to get called here too. But first, let's define the calc height function. So that's going to be function calc height. And then within this, this is where we're going to be changing the height of our shape dividers when we scroll. So we need to grab all of those shape dividers first. So we're going to do document dot query selector all. And we're looking for the oxy dash shape dash divider class. And then for each of those, we're going to run this function shape, then an arrow. And we're going to define top as their top equals shape dot get bounding client rect, which in this context, shape is the actual oxy shape divider that this code's running on at the given time. So get bounding client rect dot top. That just gives us a shorter way to reference that. And then shape dot query selector. So we're doing a query selector within the shape itself. So this is how you navigate to child elements using vanilla JS versus uh, some of the other ways that you can do it with jQuery. So query selector, we're looking for the SVG element within the shape divider. And then we're going to set the style dot height to top divided by three, then we're con gonna concatenate a string in there to add the pixel unit. Now we can go up here and just call our calc height function when the document's ready, because we want there to be no jump when you start scrolling. If we don't call it when the document's ready, then when you start scrolling, the shape divider height will jump a little bit, which is fine if they're not immediately on the screen. But if they are at the bottom of the viewport, you're going to see a little jump there. So um, this code here prevents that problem. Uh, and then we also want to call it when we scroll to make sure that we're scaling our shape dividers as we scroll. So let's save this and jump to the front end and see if it all works like we expect. As we scroll down, you can see that the shape dividers get more and more shallow as they get closer to the top of the viewport. And this also works on shape dividers along the tops of sections and things like that as well. So now that we've created our effect, let's see what it looks like on an actual page. And the nice thing is all our code just lives in this code block, so we can actually delete everything we've created and start over, but our code will still do its job. So let's go to library, design sets, and let's do a conference. And we'll just pick a cool page from conference like this speaker individual page. And let's go ahead and just add an image here. We don't have anything. Oh, we do have something in the media library. Perfect. So let's just grab this. That'll look a bit better. And then let's just add a section below this that we're going to scroll into. So let's add a section. And we need to drag it down to the bottom. And we'll use one of our global colors as the background color. We'll do this orange here. And then let's just give ourselves some room to scroll there by adding some size and spacing. We'll do 800 pixels again on that one. And then on this section, this white section here, we'll go ahead and add our shape dividers. Now, like we saw before, this works the best with kind of smoothly shaped shape dividers. So valley, wavy, um, angle works pretty well, but some of the other ones probably won't look that good if they're getting squashed as you scroll. So we're going to go with valley here. So we'll do valley two and set the color to orange. And then let's duplicate that and then reduce the opacity a bit and then set it to one of the other valley shapes. So let's do valley one. So that adds a nice little bit of layering there. And then on this section itself, we need to add some padding to accommodate those shapes. Now let's save this and let's reopen our page on the front end. And we can see that as we scroll, our shape dividers shift and get shorter and shorter as they get to the top of the viewport. Let's take a look at that again. It's really a nice smooth effect and only took about 20 lines of JavaScript. And that's just because we decided to use vanilla JavaScript instead of jQuery. It would be far fewer if you wanted to use jQuery to do this. So again, this is Elijah with the Oxygen team, and that's how to create a shape divider in Oxygen that changes its size based on its distance from the top of the viewport. Thank you very much for watching.